and let us all that we can to build a better future. All right. We got to talk about something that uh, recently caught my attention on Friday, and I wanted to see how it would play out over the weekend. But I feel it's only fair that I give my analysis on my thoughts of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Planning to potentially announce an independent run. Now, last week, we did talk about RFK Jr. potentially running as a libertarian or flirting with the Libertarian Party. We read that article from the New York Times. Now, I've reached out to a couple people who are in the Libertarian Party, and while they do like him, there's been overall mixed reaction to it. So I think it's only fair that we don't jump to speculation of whether or not he truly does run as an independent. He's made it very vocally clear that he is upset with the Democratic primary, and I think it's a logical choice for him to leave the Democratic primary. In fact, it was probably important or prudent of him to at least make his announcement as an independent at the at the get-go. I think he did uh, make a foolish decision by being part of the Democratic Party, and yes, even trying attempts to say, hey, we, we could fix this. There's There's no way you could fix that, but I do commend him if he does follow through with this as running as an independent. He'll have a better chance. And in regards to any association with the Libertarian Party, the people that I have reached out to, um, some like his policies, others do not. He's He definitely has a mixed reaction with the Libertarians. Uh, would it be ideal for him to be part of the Libertarian Party? The answer is yes, only in the fact that the Libertarians have uh, more states. They, they're they more accessible with via the ballot. But that doesn't mean that they're just going to welcome him in with open arms. So until we hear something different, that is just speculation because, again, it's been 50-50. Some libertarians like him, some do not. And that's just how it should be. Uh, but with RFK Jr. making this announcement, I want to at least acknowledge this article that came out September 29th, last month. RFK Jr. planning to announce independent run. So I think it's only fair that we pull up this article. I know a lot of people have been talking about it from due dissidents to the Jimmy Dore show. Uh, but here we go. Uh, so as it stands, the 2004 presidential candidate, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. plans to announce he will run as an independent on October 9th in Pennsylvania. Media has learned. So uh, the Kennedy machine is now planning attack ads against the Democratic National Committee in order to pave a way for his announcement in Philadelphia about running as an independent, according to a text reviewed by Mediate. Bobby feels the DNC is changing the rules to exclude his candidacy, so an independent run is the only way to go. Now, yes, this is an article talking about how he plans to make that announcement on October 9th. We will be playing that video. But again, there's a lot more to be taken away from this. Uh, first, what, what can we learn from Robert F. Kennedy making this decision? First, AOC and Bernie Sanders would never do this. And I do have to commend his ability to be extremely vocal, more so than the quote unquote progressive heavyweights uh, that have been the, well, largest voices in our atmosphere in regards to the progressive space, in regards to independent left. Um, but AOC and Bernie would never do anything like this. Hell, even Cenk Uger would never even scream from the tops of the mountains in regards towards how the DNC is rigging the system. He says that he does, but then he flip-flops back to, oh, we got to support Democrats because plump. That's it. And of course, he's going to be promoting his book, and he embarrassed himself on breaking points by saying that he would run for president, even though he is not a natural-born citizen in the USA. I know, crazy world we live in, but somehow he's going to be making that dumb, stupid decision. So in order to really talk about it, let's go ahead and pull up this video here of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. making this announcement uh, that will be taking place in Philadelphia on October 9th. So let's play it. Hi, everybody. I'm going to be in Philadelphia on October 9th to make a major announcement at the very birthplace of our nation. I'm not going to tell you right now exactly what that announcement will be. I can say, though, that if you've been waiting to come to one of my public events, this will be the one to come to. I'll be speaking about a sea change in American politics and what your part and my part is in that change. A lot of Americans who had previously given up any hope that real change would ever come through the American electoral process have begun to find new hope in my candidacy. 
And I understand the deeply felt concern that people have about the way corruption has overtaken our government. It's in the executive branch, it's in Congress, it's in the leadership of both political parties. And so some people feel a kind of cynicism alongside the hope, or they lose hope entirely because they've been disappointed so many times. I want to tell you now what I've come to understand after six months of campaigning. There is a path to victory. The hope we are feeling isn't some kind of trick of the mind. We all recognize that there's a genuine possibility of national transformation and its source is the goodness of the American people. Our government may be crooked, but our people are kind, brave, and caring. That goodness is stronger than the divisions that are keeping us all apart. I see it every day on the campaign trail, and the more I see it, the more I trust it. And the more I trust it, the more the path to victory becomes visible. So how are we gonna win against the established Washington interests? It's not through playing the game by the corrupt rules that the corrupt powers and the vested interests have rigged to keep us all in their thrall. Instead, we're gonna to have to rewrite the assumptions and change the habits of American politics. We're gonna tap into a mighty surge of people power to reclaim an honest, peaceful, just, and prosperous America. So I am inviting you to join me in Philadelphia on October 9th. There I'll share with you our path to the White House and how we can all participate in healing our nation. Okay. And there's a lot to say about that. And, of course, here is his announcement. Please join up. He'll be speaking about this again on October 9th in Philly, the city of brotherly love. I'll never forget my experience in Philly, as, after all, it was uh, where I saw firsthand the DNC. And the DNC does have to play a role in this, where the DNC uh, systematically was harassing Bernie Sanders supporters, delegates, and volunteers. It was in that area that I have came down to the very humbling conclusion that there was a 50 50 chance that Donald Trump would win the 2016 general election. Now RFK jr saying or going all in as an independent, I fully embrace it. I think it's a smart decision. He should have done it earlier. You were, you were wasting everyone's time in the democratic party. If I ever have a chance to have RFK jr on this show, I'm going to flat out say, Hey, why did you waste everyone's time? Were you not paying attention in 2016 and in 2020? Now, I don't know if we're going to get RFK Jr. on this show or not. I'm still on the list. Will I ever, ever get that knock on the door? That's that's up in the air. But again, my criticism of RFK is definitely his blind support of Israel and its apartheid tactics. And if anything, before he comes onto hard lens media, a promise is a promise. You should speak to Max Blumenthal. Again, just you dodging him is no better than Peter Hotez dodging you. That's just that's just how I feel. Uh, just throwing it out there. However, 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 being back on point, what I find interesting is the media reaction to RFK Jr. making this announcement as running as an independent. Now, again, independent. There's been talks of him being associated with the libertarians and the libertarians that I have spoken to. There's nothing confirmed. And he has mixed reactions with the libertarian party in regards to some of his policies and where he stands on certain political issues. OK, but that is what it is. But there is it's not cemented in stone. So I think it's very important that when we look at that New York article from the new uh, correction, the New York Times article. Take it with a grain of salt, because, again, flirting with the Libertarian Party, running in the Libertarian Party and just talking to chair members and people associated with the Libertarian Party, different things altogether. So and I think that's just what we should take away, because he was at Freedom Fest and the Libertarians that I spoke to that were at Freedom Fest were just saying it was just he was having a cordial conversation. Nothing more. So we could speculate. That's all good to speculate, but we can't use speculation as fact. But now let's actually pull up the media reaction to this. Now, again, if we looked at recent polling data showing Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and Dr. Cornell West, or dare I say it, an independent, it has become abundantly clear that Biden is going to fail miserably. Now, if we have RFK Jr. running as an independent, as a confirmed independent, be it associated with the libertarians or just as an independent, and add in Dr. Cornell West, 
I feel that this is devastating towards the Democrats. Now, the people who have been, well, just looking back at this, especially those who are Democrat aligned, the vote blue, no matter who people, they're saying that RFK Jr. will steal votes from Trump. I don't think that's the case at all. Donald Trump has built himself a very strong political following. And unlike Joe Biden, or either that, his Republican contenders, uh, Trump is filling up crowds and stadiums, meeting with the people, and breaking all the rules. He has millions upon millions of supporters. He had 81 million plus people vote for him in the last election cycle. They just dis didn't disappear overnight. In my personal opinion, Trump is going to be in the lead. Now, this whole idea of third parties or independents stealing votes, that's not factually true. All right. Your vote is your vote. It belongs to you. And yes, you even have that option of not voting at all. That is your choice, your choice alone. No one's going to tell you how to do it. But when you vote for a candidate, that candidate isn't stealing your vote. So if you want to vote for the Libertarian candidate, the Green Party candidate, or Independent, or whoever, that said candidate earned your vote. And you can't spoil something that's already rotten. Case in point, the Democratic primary. So let's bring up, first of all, the fantastic friends at Fox News, of all places, where they talk about it. RFK Jr. making this announcement. So let's pull up this video here. And again, huge shout out to Case Study QB. Look, Elon, I keep on reliking Tulsi Gabbard's tweet uh, where, that she made on October 18th of 2019, where she called out, um, you know, Hillary Clinton being the queen of warmongers. You should look into that. But also, hey, Case Study QB is still being censored. I would appreciate it if, uh, you know, you could reverse what the previous. Twitter administration did the case study QB's account, but we can only dream. Media, I, by the way, is reporting that RFK Jr. is planning to announce he's going to run as an independent, and he's going to make that announcement October 9th in Pennsylvania. Byron, how might this affect the race going forward? Is it good for someone like Trump, bad for Biden, or could there be some other contingency developed with that? Well, I think the, the Democratic Party had been pretty effective in shutting down any challenges uh, to President Biden and making sure there weren't going to be any debates, there weren't going to be any sort of uh, even acknowledgement that there's a contest going on in the Democratic Party. And indeed, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has never surged. He's never hit above 20 percent. A lot of times he's down around 14 percent or so. Uh, he does represent people who might be Democrats who don't want to vote uh, for Joe Biden. It would seem to me that if he announced an independent run, uh, that could be very damaging because there are those Democrats. We know they're there. They don't want Joe Biden. Uh, maybe they're not focused exactly on who they want, uh, but any credible choice they would take. Uh, on, on the question of RFK Jr., then you got Cornell West, who uh, is still out there. He's driving them absolutely nuts because he's just like, look, I represent the real liberal progressive wing of this party. You guys are kind of half-baked on that in, in that category. Might he still be a problem for this, uh, for this Biden re-election bid? Well, first let me say that Byron York is correct. The chickens have come home to roost. This unfair effort to prevent a dynamic race among Democrats is harming the support of Joe Biden. I want to pause here. Look, um, again, I'm going to rewind this, too, because this is something that we talked about uh, on the post duopoly show. Unfortunately, I won't be able to join in for that show uh, because uh, I, I will be missing out. However, I do want to bring up the fact uh, that, number one. When there is a challenger and there's the incumbent of said party, be it Democrat or Republican, it's been very rare for the incumbent. In fact, it's almost null and void for the said incumbent to participate in a primary because again that's the party choice incumbent that's that however uh, the reason why more people are bringing attention to joe biden specifically and why this race this race in the democratic primary is so important is because of joe biden's age and his health issues let's be very clear here about joe biden we have said it a lot of people have said it across the political spectrum and yes, even in corporate media, too. Surprise, surprise. Joe Biden is showing his age. He's clearly in a mental decline. He has shown and exhibited signs of dementia, Alzheimer's. And even if he were to get reelected, he would be the oldest sitting president in U.S. history. 
Nobody of that age with questionable health issues should be sitting on the throne. And so Democratic voters want somebody new and robust because it's very clear that Biden, when he speaks, he just doesn't have enough gas in the tank. And I'm being polite about this. That's the real truth. But yet corporate media, because here's where, again, it plays its part, and the Democratic establishment and the vote blue no matter who people want to build up this great shield wall around Biden and pretend everything's fine and dismiss Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. They are legitimate candidates who are in the primary. They are wasting their time, but they are in the primary. But the game is rigged. And how can you win in a rigged game? Because even in the off chance RFK Jr. is successful and gains more ground than Bernie Sanders ever could, the DNC was in its own legal right, thanks to people like Nico House and so many other independent reporters, brought to light the fact that it is a private institution and they can pick who they want as a nominee. If you voted in the Democratic primary, you're just getting a participation trophy. And that's it. That's it. And if you're supporting the establishment person, guess what? You get a gold star. If you go against the establishment narrative, well, you don't matter anyways. Your votes don't matter in the Democratic primary. Let's rewind this. To prevent a dynamic race among Democrats is harming the support of Joe Biden. It would be better to defeat your opponent's fair and square. Now, when you talk about third party candidates, you start to see people that are just going to peel off. Uh, this election is probably going to be pretty tight. The polling numbers show this election is really close. Every 1% of voters on the left that go with someone other than Joe Biden cripple his opportunities. Look at the prediction polls where people are betting. For the first time in this election cycle, we're seeing something that we didn't see last time. And that is at no point did the prediction betting polls show that Trump was likely to prevail in 2020. They're already showing that Trump is likely to. The entrance of other third party candidates mm. is likely to exacerbate that phenomenon. And then pulling up here with CNN, again, huge shout out to Case Study QB, CNN discussing it. I know, CNN of all places, the sinking ship itself. Bonnie, I want to bring in the fact that Mediate is reporting that Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who was running against uh, President Biden in the Democratic Party primary, uh, he uh, is now considering running as an independent. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Do you think that that actually could have an effect? And would he hurt Biden or might he hurt Trump? Well, we're more likely to have probably a three or four way race than we are to have a non-Trump candidate as a Republican nominee. If you look at whether it's, uh, you know, Robert Kennedy coming out and doing his own thing, you've got this no labels candidate potentially that could be another possible. No, no again, again, you keep on bringing up no freaking labels. No label is a corporate centrist think tank. That's all it is. So to anyone that you hear might be thinking, oh, no label sounds like a good idea. No, it is not. It's just Democrats and Republicans just coming together and those who are part of the establishment go against the grain. Just throwing it out there. Um, we don't know. Yeah. And I mean, that's a more likely scenario and we can debate sort of who they take share from. But if you've got Robert F. Kennedy and you've got a candidate that let's argue is center right. Oh, you got Cornell West also. Then, 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 it's Cornell interesting. West. And then it becomes an interesting dynamic. So I've looked at data around this. And on the one hand, you would assume actually that RFK, because he's doing really poorly in Democratic primary polls, would maybe actually pull more Republican voters. His message on things like vaccines, he's got this more populist kind of message. But the data that I've seen suggests he kind of pulls equally from both sides. So at the moment, I think his influence would be a little bit unclear for wash doesn't clearly benefit one side all right thanks one and all all right so uh, again again it is interesting that they keep on bringing this up to everyone's attention about rfk and uh what he could potentially do in the race um now looking at his polling data especially at the height of it it was at 20 percent but since then there's been many questionable tactics that the dnc has done especially during these last two months, such as Biden and his administration ensuring that he is not given Secret Service protection, which is something that should be offered to 
all of the presidential candidates. I, I think it's only fair that they have that protection because there's a lot of unhinged people out there in this world. It's a crazy world we live in. And uh, there was a recent security scare at an RFK Jr. event. Um, and I don't like that at all. And then there's been the massive onslaught uh, of censorship that has been happening not only to his campaign, but to other people's campaigns and the silencing of political rivals that we've been seeing from this administration. Um, if this had happened under Trump, I'm pretty sure liberals and Rachel Maddow and everyone else would be screaming from the rooftop about how unfair it is. So I hope that um, we're all made aware of what Biden and his administration, what the Democrats are doing just to try and control how this election will play out in 2024, but you can't control people's feelings. And let's let's talk about feelings, okay? RFK Jr., to the best of his ability, is trying to, or was trying to, talk about the Democratic Party of old, the ideal version of it. Now, the thing is, when you talk about something through your lens and perspective, just remember, other people see what you're talking about as well. I remember 2016, I sure as hell remember 2020 and everything that happened between 2016 through 2020 and 2020 and up until now. And the Democratic Party has made it abundantly clear that they have been a backstabbing organization towards progressives and its voting base for decades on end, even long before I was born. This whole idea of being a party of working class people or progressive policy issues is a lie. They say they care about the issues, but they use fear tactics for fundraising. They would never codify Roe v. Wade. They don't care about the civil rights movement. They don't care about any political issue. Medicare for all, student debt forgiveness. If the Democrats actually gave a damn, they would have done something about it long before I did this show or anyone else did this show. They chose to sat on their hands because they figured the American people are too stupid to ever really speak out. So good for him. But I want to pull up this interview of RFK Jr. on the Kim Iverson show. And you could tell that there is a hint of anger towards how this Democratic primary has been treating him, his campaign, and his supporters. Does this give you second thoughts about running as a Democrat? That's my big criticism about your campaign is that you're running as a Democrat. You won't give it up. I feel like you should run as an independent. They're not going to give you the the platform and the time that you deserve, uh, especially for a party that claims they're all about democracy. This seems to be antithetical to democracy. Um, how are you going to get around this blockade that they're clearly putting up? Well, well I, you know, I will point out that if I did run as an independent, there are no primaries there and there are no debates either. Um, but I, you know, I'm running, the Democratic Party is my home. I feel like the Democratic Party has lost its bearings. It's become the war party. It's become the party of censorship. It's become the party of corporate control and big pharma. Um, it's become the party. And, you know, I just got to add this joke in. But you know what else is sad about the Democratic Party? The Democratic Party back in 2020. I can't believe I saw this act of violence by the Democratic Party. And I want to read this out from one of our live stream viewing audience members. Mastermind Hour wrote this. In the Democratic primary of 2020, Tulsi Gabbard humiliated a girl on the national stage. Kamala was that little girl. <laughs> that is a freaking gold plated statement right there that's platinum plated right there okay you keep on hitting those home run homers mastermind hour of fear and that uh and that i need to do whatever i can to reclaim the party to what it used to be the party of jfk of fdr of robert kennedy it, it, it never existed rfk jr uh, come on come on come on it's it's the way you describe the Democratic Party is like your friend at the strip club who's saying, dude, I think the girl on the stage really likes me. No, she don't. No, she doesn't. OK, if you think that if you are ever in that spot, just remember, take a swig of your drink, get up, put your hat on, walk out. You're in a bad mental mindset. OK. Um, and uh, and so, you know, I'm I'm very peaceful with the choice that I've made. I hope that President Biden will change his mind and that 
Uh, he will engage in debates and some retail or town halls or retail politics of some kind. I think the, the people of this country deserve that. Um, I intend to run a campaign against uh, Mr. Biden or President Biden that is uh, congenial, that is respectful, that has decorum. I have known uh, Joe Biden for 40 years. I have a friendship with him, as does everybody in my family. But I differ with him, uh, uh, I would say, fiercely on some of the issues. And uh, and so, you know, this one is not going to be a personal battle, but it's going to be an ideological battle and it's going to be a battle about policies. And uh, I'm going to take it to the Democratic Party in whatever way I can. Yeah, I mean, you're just not going against Joe Biden only. Um, you're going against the entire Democratic machine that's probably lost its way, not just this election cycle or the previous election cycle, but many years ago. All right, here's what destroyed the Democratic Party, all right? Money in politics, corrupt politicians, and of course, the great shakeup when Ronald Boy Reagan got into office and the Democratic Party decided to switch things up, most notably with its front head man, Bill Clinton, okay? And listen, 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 folks. Uh, I'm just quoting this clip from the Jimmy Dore show. But if the American people knew what Bill Clinton and Barack Obama did to us, they'd be screaming bloody murder. OK, we, again, we had the Telecommunications Act happen under Bill Clinton. We had, again, a mass incarceration of the crime bill under Bill Clinton. Glass Siegel removed under Bill Clinton, et cetera, et cetera. Barack Obama, remember that 2008 economic collapse? The people caused it. Slap on the wrist. Going from two wars to seven, got rid of habeas corpus, and hey, whistleblowers constantly being harassed and detained. Brilliant. So finally, RFK Jr., you're making the correct decision by stepping down or stepping away from the Democratic primary. I do wish you all the best to build up a strong, independent race i would like to see that okay i am not a fan of some of his policy issues but i am in full support hey finally you left the abusive relationship you don't have to worry about the democratic party abusing you while you run in their primary okay you are now that outsider which is a brilliant move it is a smart move to do because the game is rigged now marianne williamson she's special all right. I, I don't know why it's all all what her campaign is, is nothing more than a glorified book tour at this point. But when we look at this entire election cycle, the American people are getting upset and angry. And for me as well, while looking at this, because I am disappointed in the actions of many of the candidates and some of the decisions and who they've associated themselves with, um, it's even given me pause. Who will I vote for? Who will I who will I give my vote for? And it's a very weird uh, place to be in. Shout out to uh, Misty uh, Sarcasm Stardust. Uh, you were proven correct. Electoral politics is just one big waste of time. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to tell all of you how to vote. That's your decision and yours alone to make. Uh, I'll be definitely enjoying election night with a nice ribeye steak and some good wine and whiskey. Uh, you know, just, just, just having a good night. So there you go. That's how I plan on enjoying it. But as for the entire Democratic Party, this institution has done this to itself, as well as its most zealous supporters, the people who believe in the vote blue no matter who mindset, this liberal mindset of they could do no wrong. When we look at the Democratic Party, they went after people that wanted to bring in change. Now, Bernie Sanders was a spineless, nutless wonder. He failed his people, and he sheep herded people back into the Democratic Party. But people are having enough. They want something new. They want something different. Whether or not this election cycle will awaken something more than just people voting and hoping for their politicians to do the right thing, what we need to do is start building movements and organizations not connected to Washington, D.C. We need to start building things, institutions, parties supporting citizen ballot initiatives so that we take the power back because there is an atmosphere of despair. People are working two or three jobs just to make ends meet. And it's not enough. We all see the struggles out there. Now the two party system doesn't give a damn about us, but we have to push back. So all the best to RFK jr. I do hope we can get him on the show. I do hope that he does 
does have follow through to speak to Max Blumenthal. We haven't forgot that. But I want to end this segment on a disappointing note from somebody who used to, I guess, bring in the ruckus because this is the face of the Democratic Party or what will soon be the future of the Democratic Party. Because, like, look, Dianne Feinstein's going away. All these old dinosaurs will one day go away, including Nancy Pelosi. But here is Nancy's little successor, AOC. The Democratic caucus has been operating like a well-oiled machine. The Republican caucus has been operating like a Roomba stuck on the extension cord. Brilliant move there. Shout out to Glenn Greenwald. Imagine going back to 2018 and telling AOC and her followers in just five years. That's how long we've had AOC. It seems like a decade. You'll be boasting that the Democratic Party is operating like a well-oiled machine and you'll be part of it. She's right, factually. I've never seen a party in my lifetime more in unanimous lockstep. That's why people are breaking away from the Democratic Party. That's why people are tired of the Democrats and not believing the crap spewed out by AOC or Biden or Nancy or Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. People are tired and they're about to break away. So we will definitely be paying attention to what happens on October 9th. And I encourage all of you to make your own decisions as well on how you will vote in 2024. That choice is all yours. But no matter what, we have to fight for a better future.